Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Difference Maker here, coming to you live from the Dallas Cowboys studio. Fixing it up, doing some renovations. Well, not renovations, but finishing up the, the office here. Um, I had to put in the um, bottom uh, borders, the bottom uh, baseboards. Um, I had my friend come over and help me put in the bottom baseboards, nail those in, and um, now I'm going to cover it up with some caulk, and I'll probably paint what Michael Armstrong called the jaundice room. I'm going to paint it maybe a cowboy color blue. I don't know. But anyways here, looking in Galatians. Galatians, that's right, we're looking in Galatians chapter 1, where it talks about the justification through faith in the gospel from Jesus Christ. Um, we had talked about um, that the gospel is from God and for his glory, and that uh, the gospel's messenger is sent from God. That messenger was Paul, a man who was God's chosen messenger. And he was chosen as an apostle. We discussed what an apostle was and how an apostle was sent. And we talked about three things of how Paul was sent. And he was not sent from men. And he was not sent through human agency. And he was not sent through Jesus. He was sent through Jesus Christ and God the Father. But we had come down into the second term where he was talking about that he was not sent through human agency agency. Paul was not sent through human agency. The preposition dia, dia anthropos, which is anthrop anthropos, is a uh, masculine noun. I mean, it means through or by the means of, to, to say an individual or by the means of a human being. Now, we must understand that this term is not saying Paul did not have any humans involved in his ministry's ordination. If you look at Acts chapter 9 verse 17, it says, And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's Acts chapter 9, verse 17. Here's a, something that Barnes' commentary says. It says, um, and Neither by man the instrumentality of any man, here he designs to exclude all men from having had any agency in his appointment to the apostolic office. He was neither sent out from anybody of men to execute their purposes, nor did he receive his commission, authority, or ordination through the medium of any man. A minister of the gospel now receives his call from God, but he is ordained or set apart to his office by man. Matthias the apostle chosen in the place of Judas in Acts 17 verses uh, Acts 1 verse 17 um, received his his call his call was uh, received his call from God but it was by the vote of the body of apostles Timothy was also called of God but he was appointed to his office by the laying on of hands of the presbytery in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14 but Paul here says that he received no such commission as that from the apostles they were not there they were not the means or medium of ordaining him to his work so even though the apostles chose Matthias they didn't rely on any human aid to um in their need for another apostle. Their minds were on the scriptures before choosing an apostle to replace Jesus. Now, how do I know that? Look at Acts 1, verses 20 through 23. 
And you see he talks about where he says and he quotes from the Old Testament from the book of Psalms. See, his mind was on the scripture. And whether a human lays hands on him or not, a man of God is not ordained to do the work of God by men. So a man of God is not ordained through human agency, through a man. He's ordained by God. It doesn't matter how nice he is, how good looking he is, or how good he is at loving the people he wants to. If he's not biblical, he's not God's chosen man. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 14 through 17, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of him that thou hast learned him, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. See, a true leader relies on God's word to lead him and his ministry is not by man. Now, we understand that there are certain roles in the local church that may look like man is behind, but the true leader will always consult the Lord in his word. A puppet follows man's orders. A slave follows God's. A puppet follows man's orders. A slave follows God's. A puppet will compromise. A slave will stand firm. A puppet will compromise. A slave will stand firm. That's why if, if Paul's had it been through human agency, let's say, i.e., the Pharisees, he would have compromised. He would have compromised. See, a true man of God, someone who's justified by Jesus Christ and saved, is going to rely on the Bible. He's going to rely on the Word of God. He's going to know what the Word of God teaches. And he's going to stand on that because God called him. God called him. I mean, how can you stand against God? That's the amazing thing. When God calls somebody, he calls them. There's nothing any man can do to stop what God has called. They couldn't stop Paul. Why? Because Christ had called him. You see that? That's what I want you to see. Okay, number three. Here's the third thing of how, you know, he is sent. He is sent through. Here it is. Jesus Christ and God the Father. Paul makes it so very clear that Jesus Christ is the one who sent him. No other person but Christ alone brought forth this ministry to the Galatians. This alone validates his apostleship. It validates the reason to the reason the Galatians need to listen to him and proves he is not a liar and many more things. So in other words, because God calls the man of God, that's the reason why you should listen to him. See, the man of God, he follows the word of God. He gives you the word of God. You follow what he says. Why? Because he's pointing you to Christ. He's pointing you to the word of God. That's what he'll do. Now, these pimping preachers out here are not going to do that. Because they ain't called by God. So they're not going to point you to the word of God. They're going to point you to take your money. Now, do you see it? Good. 